Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this bag here. It is felted out of 100% wool. So as you can see, there are no holes in it at all. When That's part of the felting process. You crochet it and then um, you're going to need access to a washing machine so you can wash it in hot, hot water. That's what makes it felt so there's no holes. When it's done felting and it's felted good, you can actually cut it and it will never come apart. But if you don't have access to a, a washing machine, um, you can always fill up your bathtub with really, really hot water and kind of hand wash it for as hot as water as you can stand and scrub it, you know, like you would hand wash it. I recommend the washing machine if you have it, though. But um, if you don't, I know some people have to go to the laundromat. Um, the bathtub will work, too. Um, I'll show you the yarn I used um, in just a second, but you're going to need a pair of handles. Um, or you can crochet your own if you want and felt them right along with the bag. Otherwise, I, these handles were donated to me, so I'm not sure where they came from. But I know you can get handles off eBay and um, Amazon. Um, and any craft store is going to have handles too. And this is just a keychain I got at a uh, yarn shop just to add decoration to it. So th this yarn, I think, that I used felted really nicely. As you can see, there's no holes at all and that was only one time through the washing machine sometimes it takes a couple but but uh let's go ahead and get started on it okay for this project i'm using plymouth galloway yarn it is a 100 percent worsted wool yarn it needs to be 100 percent wool um i believe any animal fiber will felt um but i think wool felt's the best it can't you don't have to use this brand. Um, but make sure whatever wool you get, it was 100% and it doesn't say pre-washed. Because if it says pre-washed, it's not going to felt. So, 100% um, wool, I think. Um, um, Patton's Classic Wool, it felt really good, 100%. Um, but any 100% pure wool. Um, but I use this uh, Plymouth brand, Galway. Um, there's 210 yards per skein. I used three different colors and it just took me one of each each color. Um, they don't have names of the colors. They only have the color numbers. So the dark was 132. The blue was color 111. And the light purple was color 98. I do not know why they don't have names. I thought that was kind of weird, but it's the first time I've used this yarn. So, but remember, you don't have to use this. Um, any 100% wool, pure wool will work. Just make sure it doesn't say that it's been pre-washed. Because then it will not felt. So, 210 yards. This is what I got left of each skein for this bag. And I'm going to be using a size I, which is a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. Okay, you want to start out with a chain of 83. I'm going to show you on a smaller scale because I already did uh, my big piece. But it's really, it's really an easy bag to make. But if you want to make yours bigger and smaller, you just need to start out with an odd number. So I started with a chain of 83. And then what you want to do is do a double crochet in the fourth stitch from the hook. And remember, we never count the one that's on our hook. So one, two, three, four, and double crochet. And now we're going to work one double crochet in every stitch for the length of the chain. Just one double in every stitch. Just like this until you get to the end of your row. And remember, I'm just showing you on a smaller scale. So once you get to the end, you should have 81 stitches when you make it to the end of your row. And that is, that's 81 counting this little guy here on the end. He counts as a stitch two. So make sure you're counting him and you'll have a total of 81 stitches. So now what we're going to do is chain three, which is going to count as our first double crochet. And then we're going to turn our work. And we're going to put our next double crochet 
not here in this very, very first stitch, but right in the next one. This chain three is counting as the double crochet on top of this one. So we're gonna go and double crochet into this stitch right here. And then we're gonna work one double crochet for row two, every stitch across until you get to the end of the row. So it's just rows of double crochet now. It's pretty easy. Now when you make it to the end of row two, you want to make sure your last stitch is in the top of that last chain right here. So make sure you go into that and you should have a total of 81 stitches still. And again, you just want to chain three, which counts as your first double and turn and start again. Not right here in this very, very, very first stitch, but this next one. And double crochet for row three, every stitch across until you get to the end. So you just want to keep doing rows of double crochet 81 stitches at the end of every row. You want to do that for a total of six rows. Okay, once you get six rows done, um, I'm going to change colors here. I like to tie my yarn off when I change colors. So if you can change colors without tying your yarn off, that's fine. But I always tie mine off. Clip it, tie it off. And then I'm going to start my new yarn, which I'm going to use my blue. Sorry about that. I'm trying to find the end of it here. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to just start in the same place that you just tied off in or wherever you started your yarn out here. This last stitch. Chain one and turn. Now I'm going to do one single crochet into that very very first stitch. So the very very first one, but one single crochet. Now I'm going to do a bobble stitch into the next. So what I'm going to do is yarn over, go into the next stitch, draw up a loop, and yarn over and go through the first two loops. I want to do that five times. So that was one. Yarn over, go in, draw up a loop, Yarn over, go through the first two loops. That's two times. Again, yarn over, go into the same stitch, draw up a loop. Yarn over, go through the first two loops. That's three times. Again, yarn over, draw up a loop. Yarn over, go through the first two loops. That's four times. I'm going to do it one more time. Yarn over, go into the stitch, draw up a loop. Yarn over and go through for the first two loops. And you'll see you have six loops that remain. Yarn over, go through all six. Give it a tug, pull it kind of tight, and go right down to the very next stitch and single crochet into it. Just like that. Now the bobbles are made on the opposite side. So you can see it's bobbled out over here. So now we're going to bobble again into the next stitch. So we yarn over, go into the next stitch draw up a loop, yarn over and go through the first two loops on your hook and you want to do that five times. <clears throat> so that was one, two, three, four, five, six loops that remain. Yarn over, go through all six loops. Give it a nice tug, single crochet into the next stitch. And then if you turn it around, you can see now you got two bobbles. So that's the pattern we're gonna repeat for row seven here bobble into the next stitch
six loops that remain. Yarn over, go through all six, give it a tug, single crochet into the next stitch. And when you look around, now you got three bobbles made. So I'm going to repeat this until I get to the end of the row. It's just bobble, single, bobble, single. Okay, I'm coming to the end of row seven, and I just did my last bobble, and I want to end in a single crochet into the top of this chain three here on the end. So we'll go right into it and single crochet. Now I'm going to tie off again because I'm going to switch colors. Now, if you flip your work over, can't find my scissors, so I gotta break my yarn there. If you flip your work over, it will be the right side, and you can see now what it's gonna look like. You should have a total of 40 bobbles now across. So, go back here to the back side. I'm gonna start a new color, but you can change colors as often as you want. You don't have to do it like me. But I'm gonna switch to a different color and I'm going to start right here in this single crochet and I am going to chain three which counts as a double crochet and turn my work. Now what I'm going to do is put one double crochet in every stitch across. So there's my first one. Now my next one is going to go on top of this next bobble. So if you flip it over you can kind of see needs to go, let me get my camera to focus in on it, right here, just kind of right on top of the bobble. Just go right into it and double crochet. And then you double crochet into that single crochet that's between the bobbles. And then double crochet on top of your next bobble. And then double in between in that single crochet between the bobbles and then double crochet on top of the next bobble. If you flip it you can kind of see it's just right here. It looks like a big long stitch. So just kind of go right into that and double crochet and then the single crochet in between the bobble. So I'm just going to repeat this all the way around or all the way to the end of the row. I'm putting one double crochet in every stitch. So one double crochet on top of every bobble and in the chain or in the single crochet that's between each bobble. Just trying to hide them tails a little bit as I went. So just like this and you want to do that until you get to the end of the row okay i've made it to the end of round eight with my row of double crochet and i should have 81 stitches again just like we did down here now what i want to do i want to do a total of three rows of double crochet so this would be my first one so what i'm going to do is chain three again and start another row of double crochet so I'll just double crochet right here into that next stitch and double crochet all the way down and you still should have 81 stitches at the end of your rows of double crochet. So I'm working on row 9 and row 10 will also be a row of double crochet. So rows 8, 9, and 10 will just be row of double crochet. 81 stitches at the end of each row. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up this row of double crochet and then I'll do row 10 will be double crochet and then I'll meet back up with you and we'll, do, we'll start row 11. Okay I've made it to at the end of row 11. So what I'm going to do now is tie off and change colors to my bobble stitch row and I'm just going to repeat that again. I'm going to do a bobble stitch row and then three rows of double crochet and then a bobble stitch row and three rows of double crochet. So I'm just going to repeat that a couple times. So row 12 
go ahead and tie off here. Remember, you don't have to tie off if you're if you know how to switch colors. I'm just not very good at switching colors without tying off. It always looks cleaner to me to just tie off. So go ahead and start in that same stitch that you just ended in. And we're going to do our bobble stitch row. So we're going to chain one and turn. Single crochet right into that very first stitch. And then bobble into the next. tight and single directly into the next one and then bobble and then single into the next so I'm going to repeat this bobble stitch row to the end and remember you should have 40 bobbles and then I'm going to switch back to my other color and do three rows of double crochet and then I will switch back and do another row of bobbles and I'm going to continue that pattern bobble row and then three rows of double bobble row three rows of double okay here's what I've done so far I've done 15 rows so far so I'll flip it over and show you what I've done I've done the six double crochet of the dark color, seven for the bobble, eight, nine, ten double crochet, eleven for the bobble, twelve, thirteen, fourteen for the double crochet, and fifteen for another row of bobble. Now I'm going to switch colors back to the dark and I'm going to do six more rows of double crochet. Now you can do this pattern however long you want, it doesn't matter. But I'm going to go ahead and switch back where I ended here. Right here in the sing last single crochet I did. I'm going to go back to the very first color that I used. And I'm going to do six more rounds uh, or rows of double crochet. So I'm going to chain three, turn my work. I just used the tail there. Try that again. So chain three, count as your first double, turn your work, and I'm gonna work one double on top of the bobble, just like we did before, and then one into that single crochet in between the bobbles. And I'm gonna do this for six more rounds, or 21 rows total because we'll be on rows we're on row 16 right now and we want to do six more so that'll be 21 rows total of double crochet or 21 rows total altogether six more rows of double crochet so I'm going to continue going back and forth until I get my six rows of double crochet here or till I reach a total of 21 rows all together counting the bobbles and the doubles should have 81 stitches still at the end of every row of double crochet so I'm going to finish this up and I'll meet you back up with you and we'll sew the bag together. Okay, I got my 21 rows done and you want to make sure you hide all your tails really really good, which I already did, because when you go to wash it, you don't want it coming on done. So we're gonna I'm gonna sew the sides up this way. So fold your piece in half. And I'm just going to slip stitch mine together. So I got the right side of my work facing me. And I'm going to start at the top here. 
And I'm going to grab a stitch. The first stitch up here of that chain space. And the first stitch on the other side. And that's where I'm going to start my yarn. And I'm just going to go all the way down. I'm going to chain one. And I'm going to slip stitch it together. So I'm going to go into the next stitch on the front piece. The next stitch on the back piece. If I can find it here. And slip stitch. And I'm going to do this all the way down. This piece. And then this piece. Slip stitch. Next piece. Or next stitch. Next stitch back behind. And slip stitch. And this is what I'm going to do the whole way down. On both sides. It's just slip stitching it together. Now you can use a yarn needle and some yarn if you prefer to just sew it up. Either way will be just fine. Just make sure you sew it up real tight so when you wash it that it doesn't um, come undone. This is it. Just like this. All the way down. On both sides. Slip stitching it right together. And then when you get it all slip stitched up, you want to go ahead and hide the rest of your tails really good. Okay, I got my sides all sewed up, as you can see. Now what I'm going to do before I felt it is go around the top of it real quick. Camera hasn't been, camera hasn't been working that well. And it's just going to clean up that top edge. So you can start anywhere you want. I'm just going to start just right over here. Now you see there's going to be double crochets. And then we'll have the single crochets on the ends of the bobbles. So I'm going to go right through this whole double crochet and start my yarn. And I'm going to chain one. I'm going to go right through that same space. I'm going to work two single crochets. And I'm going to jump over here to the next double. And I'm going to go right through the whole, the whole space. And work two single crochets again. Like that. And then I'm going to jump over here to the next double here. The space between the last double and the second to the last. Just right in between it. And work two single crochets. And this is what I'm going to do all the way around. The next double crochet right here. Right through this whole space. Two single crochets. The next one. Two singles. That's my tail flopping up. I'll cut it off in a minute. And the next one. Two singles. And then when I get over here to this bobble, you'll see the, there's the one single crochet on the end. Just go right through that one single crochet. And work one single crochet. And now I'm back to where there are, work one single crochet here in this space. So one single crochet through that single crochet. And then you'll see there's like another little space here. Go through that one too and work a single crochet. And then I'm back at my double crochets again. So I'll go ahead and work two right through those. And then the next one, two. And then the next one, two. And then right through the single crochet. And then right through that little hole next to the single crochet. And then two single crochets. This double. We're going to do this all the way around. This is just kind of cleaning up the top edge a little bit. It doesn't have to be exact. Just kind of evenly space out your single crochets if you can. I mean, the count doesn't really matter, so. I'm going to show you what you do when you get to the... Oh, when you get to the um, 
corner here or the uh, seam where we sewed it together now this last here's the seam where we sewed it together I did two single crochets into this double and then there's a double here and we sewed it it looks a little small but put two single crochets into that one it's kind of where we sewed it together and again it doesn't have to be perfect just kind of evenly space out your single crochets but I'm just going right around that last double crochet okay and you want to do this until you get back to the beginning Okay, when you make a back around, you just end with a slip stitch into your first single crochet. Now I'm going to clip that off. And now I'm going to hide this tail really good. And then I'm going to put it in the washer. So when you put it in the washer, hopefully it should shrink up and hide any holes. You probably shouldn't see any holes at all. Hopefully. I always get really nervous when I start to felt something because I never really know what it's going to look like, you know. Because wash, putting it in a washer can really change it up. I mean, it could shrink it more than what you thought. It could leave gaps and holes, and you have to wash it again and keep washing it. And, but, or it could just kind of... I've had things that just, like, completely changed the whole entire look. So, I get really nervous putting it in a washer. But, what you want to do is you want to wash it on hot the hottest setting and um, put a towel or a pair of blue jeans in there with it so it'll kind of agitate it rub with rub on it while it's washing and um, let it run through the whole cycle um, and take it out you can put a little bit of laundry soap if you want just like a, a little bit if you want you don't have to but if you want to you can but wash it on hot with a pair of blue jeans or a towel or something and then um take it out and if it looks like it's felted really good let it run the whole cycle some people say to stop it at spin i always let it run a whole cycle and there should not be any holes in it if you see holes you can wash it again on hot um sometimes uh, it takes a couple washes I've never felt it with this brand of yarn, so I could not tell you how it's going to work out. But they told me that I felt it good, so we'll see. Um, and then, once it's done, I always run it, put it in the dryer on high heat for a little bit. I mean, I don't dry it the whole way, but just for a little bit on high heat. And if you're felting handles, or if you're making your handles, you want to add them now um, before you felt it that way they're felted too if you're wanting them to be felted and remember eh, they'll shrink a bit so we want to make them um, a little bit thicker than what you normally would so to um, make up for the shrinkage so what I'm going to do now is go throw mine in the washer on hot with a pair of blue jeans and I'm going to let it run a whole cycle and I'm going to see what happens wish me luck fingers crossed okay I got mine felted, and it felted pretty good. It felted in the first wash, so I think it did pretty good. You don't, now, I told you put it in the dryer in a high heat. Just put it in there for just a little bit. Do not dry it all the way, because mine's still wet. And then what you want to do while it's still wet is shape it out into the shape that you want it and let it dry. You can pin it down if you want. And, you know, kind of like blocking, I guess, if you ever do that. You just uh, get the shape you want and then let it dry the rest of the way. But I'm going to go ahead and put my handles on real quick. I'm just going to sew them on with a piece of the yarn, yarn needle. And I have these handles here. And I'm just going to sew them right up here to the top. Just, I can, you can pretty much tell where they're going to be equal. And you want, if you're, if you're sewing handles on this way, make sure the needle that you're using is pointy on the end. And not uh, blunt, or it won't work. But it won't go through the felt that well. I, I guess it will, but it's not going to be that easy. So I'm just going to sew it on. Hold it here. And sew it on. My handles. Nice and neat. And then I'll let mine lay out and dry the rest of the way.
You just sew on both handles the exact same way if you're sewing handles, or you could have made your own. Just like this, you get the idea, and then do the other side, and then do the other handle. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up my handles real quick. Okay, once you get your handles on, or if you've already crocheted your own handles, um, either way is fine. But once you get them on and it's still damp, remember you want to straighten it out to your liking. And you want to, if you want to pin it down while it's still damp or whatever, and let it dry that way. And then it'll be tomorrow when you wake up, it'll be nice and dry and ready to go. Put stuff in. Uh, mine's still a little damp, but I went ahead and I got this key ring. And I just added that on there for decoration. But that's it. That's all there is to felting. That yarn actually felted pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. I'll probably buy it again for my felting projects. Um, please uh, don't forget to subscribe, my, to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And until next time, have a good day.